Hello everyone and welcome to a sold out Surrey Sports Park. Over a thousand seats have been sold for NBL Match Night 3. The undefeated Surrey Smashers with the biggest win of the NBL so far host Loughborough Sport in search of their first win following a narrow 3-2 defeat to Team Derby on Match Night 2. Tonight we have national champions, Commonwealth medalists, European title winners, Olympians and some of the best young domestic talent right on court. The fastest racket sport in the world just got a whole load faster. The commentary team for this evening is myself, Dave Rogers, and once again alongside me, Neil Cottrell. Neil, another match night, another fantastic venue and great to see a packed house. Hi Dave, this could well be the match of this season so far. I think we've got two brilliant teams that are really evenly matched. So I'll be really excited to see how, how we go in this first, uh, in the first game. Yep, we've been here a couple of hours uh, in the build-up and we've been speaking to people from badminton, from uh, the competition in general. And this is a really, really difficult one to call, despite the previous results that either of these teams have had. It's been really interesting because uh, everyone who's uh, who we've spoken to has had a different opinion about where the match might go. Uh, I think a lot of the games are really evenly balanced. So you know, with the shorter format, then there's, there's no guarantees on who's going to win. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, we've seen that already in the matches that we've covered. We've had some formalities that have gone the way, well, so-called formalities that have gone uh, the way that no one would have predicted. I'll give you a quick run through of uh, the order of proceedings for the match this evening. We kick it off with the mixed doubles, Surrey Smashers, Matt Nottingham and Emily Westwood taking on Loughborough's Marcus Ellis and Jenny Walworth. It's then the women's doubles as Gabby Adcock and Afa Muskins from Surrey Smashers take on Loughborough's Lauren Smith and Chloe Birch. We then move on to the men's singles, Carl Baxter takes on Henry Huskinen. It's then women's singles time as Soraya Devish Eichbergen takes on Loughborough's Linda Zichiri and we end up with the men's doubles. Dean George and Surrey's captain Chris Langridge taking on Loughborough's Peter Briggs and their captain Harley Towler. So right, let's talk about the first match. We've got about just under 10 minutes according to the official clock before we get underway. The mixed doubles, Sorry, it's another sports, interesting, uh, an interesting mix of the order they've put the fixtures in. But uh, the mixed doubles could be the one that sets the tone for the entire day. Absolutely right, Dave. Marcus Ellis and Jenny Woolworth will probably go on court with being the slight favourites, uh, but they're a pair who don't play together normally. Uh, Jenny's fallen off away, away from the uh, national programme for a couple of years, whereas uh, Matt Nottingham and Emily West were training full-time at the National Centre. Although they don't play mixed doubles together on a normal basis, but you know they're, they're good players who can play with anybody pretty much because they uh, the way that they play. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how, again, so the battle between youth and experience and, and whether the uh, the young guns at Nottingham and Westwood can uh, can take out Ellis and Warwick. From what we've seen so far in the competition, it's interesting. It's difficult to tell whether youth or experience gives you the advantage. It's it's so evenly poised. Loughborough must be feeling confident, though, because they've been able to field an unchanged team from that narrow defeat, so they'll all have one NBL game Sorry, under their belts, and they'll have learnt a lot, won't they? They will, and I think we found in the last set of matches that, that the teams were a little bit more ready to play the the power plays and, and the timeouts and, and that sort of thing, so I think they learned from their first matches, so it'll be really interesting to see whether uh, Loughborough and Surrey can, can actually build on the experiences that they had in the first games and, uh, and play the, the, sort of the tactical way uh, to their own advantage. The Loughborough players just making their way out onto court now, dressed all in purple with that white chevron across the chest. To a very polite welcome from the uh, from the home support. Actually, a lot of respect in the room. Well, look, we were talking to the uh, the Loughborough team management earlier, and they were hoping to bring some some uh, home 
uh, away supporters with them, but uh, unfortunately there weren't any tickets spare. So that is a good problem to have. Now it's all gone dark in here. And there's a screen that you can't see at home, but the players from the Surrey Smashers are on a big screen, counting down. And now the crowd are joining in. Three, two, one. The heartbeats have slowed down, and the Surrey Smashers are about to be welcomed onto court for the first time in the NBL. This, of course, their first home fixture. Over a thousand tickets sold. You just couldn't get hold of them. Over two weeks ago, they sold the final ticket. Will you please welcome your Surrey Smashers? Sounds absolutely incredible here inside Surrey Sports Park over on the far side. The lights are shining, the spotlight's on, and the players are being introduced individually. First up, Captain Chris Langridge. Great welcome for him, and what a spectacle. This is what the NBL's all about, Neil. Absolutely, the players will love this sort of thing. It's more akin to the, the boxing or the darts, uh, with the players making their individual entrances. David Jones. So far, Dean George has been my favorite. He's really hyped Matt the crowd up. That's Matt Nottingham just making his way out. He's playing in the, men, in the mixed doubles first up. So he'll have to put all this uh, rigmarole and pomp and ceremony out of his mind to get his concentration levels up for a, a tough first match. Especially with the new rules with the uh, the NBL, they, they only have a really short knock-up period, so he's going to have to get off the court pretty quickly and get himself ready for the for the match. Carl Baxter making his way out. He's got a really tough men's singles match, of course. His opponent from Loughborough defeated Raj Youssef pretty comfortably in his first match. It was an awesome performance from Huskainen against Youssef. Again, Youssef would have gone on court expected to win that match, but it has, has happened so much in the NBL so far, you just really cannot tell exactly what's going to happen. And Gabby Adcock. This is a really good experience for some of the younger players as well, that the, on the Surrey team especially, that they, uh, they're not actually playing in the fixture tonight, although they may be called on as substitutes, but um, to be involved in this environment is absolutely fantastic experience for them. As the lights come back up, huge credit to Surrey here. They've not only made it look, but feel like a fantastic spectacle. And the crowd really playing their part too. You can see the clappers in the airs. We've got the young man in the green jacket on the big screen. Let's have a little bit of a chat about, uh, about the Surrey Smashers team. Their singles remain the same, but they've made a couple of changes uh, in, the, in the doubles. Tom Wolfenden has made way for Dean George. Interesting that they've chosen to change a team that won their first fixture. Is that risky or calculated? It's hard to say. I mean, it, it may just be like a, a bit of a squad rotation thing as they do in, in the football, but, um, you know, Dean's a very good player in his own right. He's more, spends more of his time coaching these days, and, and whether that's uh, a fact that he's got a little bit more experience that he can bring to the, the, what possibly could be the deciding match in the... Uh, deciding event in this match. So left from maintaining their huddle there, Surrey smashes, waiting at the net to shake hands. According to the big clock in front of us, we're just three minutes away from the action. If you're watching at home, don't forget, we would love to hear from you if you're enjoying the NBL. You can get in touch with us via Twitter. The Twitter handle is at NBL underscore official. And we're using the hashtags Game Changer and hashtag NBL Badminton. So if you're watching at home, why not show us where you're watching from? Why not 
Tell us if you're enjoying the action, the rule changes, and Lord knows there are some rule changes, but they've made for an absolute festival of badminton so far in match nights one and two, but now we're just a couple of minutes away from match night number three, getting underway, the mixed doubles, Matt Nottingham and Emily Westwood taking on Marcus Ellis and Jenny Woolwork, a wealth of experience and quality that we're going to see on this live stream for the first time facing off against each other this evening. I'm not going to uh, hassle you for a prediction, Neil, but, uh, but what do you think we're going to look out for in this match? As I said before, Ellis and Woolwork will come on onto court as the uh, slight favourites for the game. Matt Nottingham is in banging form at the moment, won the men's doubles event in the Welsh International last weekend, so will be really high in confidence. Emily Westwood won her first match in the uh, in the NBL in the first uh, in uh, match night one, so again we'll be feeling pretty confident. Ellison Woolwork did lose their first uh, first match in their in their game against um, I forget who he was now, but uh, you know they are very experienced. I'm sure they will bounce back. They've got lots of sort of world class experience, so um, it just depends how they start really. It was interesting that uh, that Alison Woolwork for left, but they lost their first match against Team Derby, who had one match night's experience already. And we saw when we were at Nottingham uh, the the same night, because uh, of course we were at the one fixture and the other broadcast covered the other. These players have really benefited from having one NBL match under their belt. Yeah, certainly the decisions around when to play, to take the power play point, has been. Uh, it was crucial for Milton Keynes in their, in their last game. Um, so it will be really interesting to see how both teams approach that and whether they've been speaking about it with the, the team management and the coaches just to have a bit of a, a bit more of a strategy uh, in mind rather than just waiting to see what happens. If you are joining us watching the NBL for the first time, there are some rule changes. We'll talk you through them as the evening unfolds. But you've heard uh, Neil talk about the power play a couple of times. If you've not seen the power play before, if you look on your screen right now as the players are introduced, just to the left of the net, you will see a rainbow-colored stand with a sh shuffle on top that has a pink tip. That is the power play shuttle. Each team has one power play per event, the event being the mixed doubles, the women's doubles, the men's singles, the women's singles, or the men's doubles. They have one power play shuttle per event, and if they win the point on that serve, it is worth two points. If the defending team wins the point, it's power play over, and they win just one point. But particularly in the uh, in the last match we were at, Neil, we saw power plays winning sets, we saw power plays winning matches and breakers, when done correctly, it's a really, really effective weapon. It is, and I think the other, the other sort of slight difference that we saw in terms of um, teams benefit from a bit of experience with the power plays, and the shuttle flies slightly differently. So having to adjust how they're serving and the type of shots that they play was probably a more significant or as significant factor as when they played the power point as well, because it's, it's no use to you if you lose the rally. So it's, it's about making sure that you put yourself in the position where you've got the chance to win and not make an unforced error. The match official is just being introduced out onto the court to the Imperial March. Also interesting that the players do have, well, the Surrey players have got their Twitter handles on the back of their shirts. Remember, do get in touch with us via Twitter. We'd love to hear from you at NBL underscore official is where to send all of your tweets to. So the final preparations and the toss being done on court. This is the mixed doubles, Surrey Smashers, Matt Nottingham and Emily Westwood. Nottingham, a previous gold and silver medalist at the European Juniors. Emily Westwood is an England international. Their opposition, Marcus Ellis, previously top 20 in the world and Jenny Woolworth, an ex-national champion herself. So. A great pedigree out on court and a fantastic way to get us underway, Neil. It, is, it should be a great match. I mean, Marcus Ellis is one of the fastest players in, uh, domestically at the moment. He's he's all action and be looking to take the shot really early in the midcourt and try and put loads of pressure on Emily Westwood. Um, Matt Nottingham, a different style of player. He's a bit, bit taller, a bit longer reach. And we'll, we'll look to try and 
sort of change the pace and look for angles a little bit more to try and get an advantage. Um, Jenny's the, the sort of the real class player on court as well, although she's been out of full-time badminton for a, for a couple of years now. Um, so it just depends on, on her level, really, how, how she can deal with the, uh, the players who are, are training full-time and, and can she stay on pace and, and control what's happening from the net. It'll be interesting to see whether or not the shortened format will mean that as a result of not training full-time, her conditioning will keep her in the match. Yeah, I think physically it is it is an advantage to the players who aren't playing full time. Um, in in terms of you know they will they'll be able to last the whole the whole match. The big question is the speed though. You know, can they generate sufficient pace in the shuttle and, and movement speed to uh, to play over that shorter period? So Seri smashes all in black with the turquoise piping. Lufra Sport. The official name is actually African Violet for the colour of their uniforms with the white chevron and the white trim. We're about to get underway here at Surrey Sports Park. After all that pomp and ceremony, it is time for the action. Again, if you're joining us for the first time at the MDL, we play first to nine points, best of five. Westwood will serve first. Well, that was quite a civilised rally to get us underway, Neil. Well, as you can see, that uh, both pairs were trying to sort of play each other oh. around the court, trying to look for an opening rather than just go help a leather and just try and hit the shuttle as hard as possible. Westwood spent more time at the back of the court than she'd have liked. Yeah, yeah the, uh, it's clearly one of the tactics that the Loughborough pair are going to try and play is to try and get Westwood to the rear of the court. So behind the back there from Alice gets a, a ham of approval from the, from the crowd. It's actually 3-1 to Loughborough. Apologies for the delay in the update of the scores. Short with the lift there and well finished from Matt Nottingham. Yeah, it was a good attack to the, uh, the low service and he hung around at the net just to see if a week or two could come and he killed it really nicely then. from left for there. You really can't avoid those unforced errors in this short format of the game. And this time it's Ellis who finds the net. And the smashes sneak into the lead. 4-3. Oh, in the opening three. stages of this mixed doubles match. So a four-point run oh, for the Smashers pair here. Yeah, it's been good attacking play. The, um, the Smashers pair trying to keep the shot a little bit flatter over the net, so 
Uh, it just brings Emily more into the game so she can play those attacking shots and then try and move forward rather than getting caught, as you mentioned earlier, at the rear of the court. Oh. So it's over four, five. So it's over the shuttle, just glancing off Emily Westwood's racket before and that Matty returned it. So that makes it four, five. And it's Matt Nottingham who can't quite get hold of the jump smash to level it up at five apiece. Employing a similar tactic to, to how Loughborough started that Matt looked like he was going to smash the first one, played a really deceptive punch clear to get Jenny to the back of the court, got a short lift, but then couldn't put it away. He might rue that later on in the game. Big applause from the home crowd as Emily Westwood takes the body line tactic. Jenny Walbrook can't yeah, return. Uh, oh. For a diminutive figure, she packs a bit of a punch if the lift's short, so we've still got to be careful. Good work from Alice there, reacted well and read the serve. Yeah, the margins for error when you're serving, uh, when, when the, your opponent has got their foot right on the service line is really tough. Matt Nottingham puts Surrey Smashers back into the lead. It's close though, 7 6. Going back to that service, uh, well, you well, say well, your well, margin well. for error is very small. What are your options when you're serving at your opponent who's got their foot in that position? That was one of the options to, to employ the foot serve if, um, you know, well, if your well, opposition well. is attacking well. your, your low serve. But Obviously, Jenny benefited from that from that court there, but it did force her to the back of the court, which can be a useful tactic in mix. Oh. Once again, Emily Westwood getting the better of Jenny Woolwood, and that sets up the first set point. The Surrey Smashers eight seven. Jenny Warwick again benefiting from the net cord. So at eight all, this is game point no matter who it goes to. Finds the net and the smashes take the closest of first sets, 9-8. I think Surrey deserved that first set. I think, uh, you know, overall the standard of play was better. If you can remember that Loughborough got a couple of uh, fairly lucky net cords as well to, to bring them back into the match, so they, they could have taken that first set. But, uh, you know, Surrey hang on for that, so really good start for that. So one set into this mixed doubles, best of five, remember. First to nine points, and Matt Nottingham and Emily Westwood of Surrey Smashers have taken the first 9-8. Quick turnaround. And Surrey will serve first. Lovely touch there from Westwood, and we've been joined in the commentary position by Chris Lamp. Chris, can you hear us? That's the first question. Just about. Just about, okay. Uh, unfortunately, Chris doesn't have a set of headphones, so we have to speak up a little bit. First things first, Chris, what a turnout. This is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we, we heard from the beginning it was going to be a big crowd, and it is. I'm really impressed with the way they've advertised it and so on, and the amount of people that's turned up here. It's great. 
certainly is, and a great start yeah, from yeah, your yeah, guys yeah. as well. Now you've got a little bit of hanging round to do because you're not uh, you're not on until last. But it was a fantastic walkout, and the introduction must have felt pretty special in front of this capacity crowd. Yeah, it was great. I mean, the the crowd so far has been really loud, and well, it shows from the first set. We've we've managed to snatch the first set, and probably is partly due to the crowd. So it's been it's been a great turnout. And this is a question we've asked uh, all of the players that we've spoken to. How does it? How does the NBL feel, and how have you all settled into it with with all of the rule changes and all of the scoring and and you know obviously it's a break from from your normal tall matches, but uh, but, but how have you settled into it all? Um, I mean, I think with different players, it's been different. Um, our first match was against Milton Keynes. In the, um, I played men's doubles there, and it was a bit of a strange game. First of all, getting used to the nine points. It's we hadn't really practiced it maybe as much as we should have, and it is it is a slightly different um, different approach you have to take. Um, I mean, you can see out here today. There's maybe a few more mistakes than you'd you'd want normally, possibly because people are a bit tense because there's so many big points, or you know, or they're thinking it's getting so close. You know, I need to go for a winner when maybe you wouldn't normally because you know it's it's only three two. Mark has made quite a simple mistake there, which you wouldn't expect from him normally. Three two, Sari leading. Well, Leffrew have won the point there. Great attacking play, but Emily Westwood's defence there was fantastic. Yeah, she's having a really good go here, Emily. Yeah, that yeah, uh, yeah. she's getting targeted on the defence quite a bit. Uh, likewise, you know, Matt Nottingham is really trying to put some pressure on Jenny, and, and uh, fantastic rally there. This time, Matt Nottingham finds the net. So, Chris, how um, how have you approached it, and, and do you think you've learnt about the new scoring system and how to play the game from actually having done it? Do you think your experience is going to benefit you moving forward today? Yeah, definitely. I mean, from from actually playing the first match, we had a you know a tight, long game. I think it has benefited me. I hope this match um, we can maybe use a bit of the tricks we learned from the first match the power play you know the timeouts these aren't things we normally do so it is, it is a learning curve for us I mean here hopefully we'll see from our guys there if they're in a bit of trouble or something they might use the power play or a timeout just to break things up Marcus Ellis finding a bit of rhythm here and Loughborough leading 6-3 in the second How are you finding dealing with the pink shuttles, Chris? Um, yeah, they are they are quite different actually. I think because of the the colour of the the base, they're quite a bit heavier. So it is actually quite different when they when you do bring the power play in. I mean, it's it's almost playing with a much faster shuttle, so the tactics do change. A few mistakes started to creep in from the Surrey Smashers pair. Loughborough have really found their rhythm. And they lead 8-3. This is set point to level things up. <laughs> Lovely work from the Surrey pair, though. First of all, Matt Nottingham with a big jump smash. And then Emily Westwood on hand with a little touch across the net. To win the point for her team, 4-8. Yeah, hopefully Surrey can get back into the into the sort of the, the flow of the rallies a little bit more, I think. Uh, Loughborough have been a little bit more consistent in this set. Out. The shuttle is long yeah, and yeah, Loughborough yeah. level things up 9 4. Much oh, more yeah. impressive from the travelling pair. That just shows that a few mistakes and a few errant points and, and the set's out of your sight, isn't it? Is that something that, that you bear in mind, Chris, in, in the build-up to this? Do you approach the start of sets differently because you're so much closer to the end point? I mean, yeah, if, if you look back at that set, I'd personally say the defining point was the long rally where Loughborough took it. We were on the attack, then Loughborough on the attack, we were on the attack, and then Loughborough ended up winning the point, and that was something like to put them 4-3 up. And then from there, they had a big run all the way to something like 8-3. And I think if we'd have won that point, 
it's very different because then a lot of mistakes came. So it does show how the, the change of flow can make such a difference to the step. Strike first in the third. Interesting, Neil, you said at the very beginning that both teams are trying to keep the shuttle quite flat. What it has meant is that Matt and Marcus haven't really been able to unleash their power at all so far in the match. No, I'll say the, uh, the length has been quite good on lifts, and uh, I think a lot of the, the, sort of the lifts and the clears have been directed towards the ladies because obviously they've got slightly less power than the men. Shuttle just long there from Matt Nottingham, so left for his first point of the third, 1-2. Yeah. Again long from Nottingham, yeah. nicely disguised there from Marcus Ellis. So you said in the beginning that you, you may not have uh, trained as much as you should have for the 9.4 mat. Is that something that you addressed, Chris, following the first match night? Yeah, I mean, I think we all thought about it a little bit more and how tactics and, you know, these, these slightly different rules come into play. Um, hopefully, I can prove that we've learned a little bit when it comes to our match, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll hold into that one, Neil. Oh, Big oh, smash oh. there from Matt Nottingham. So 3-2 to Surrey Smashers early in the third. Have you had time to spend much uh, much time together as a team? Um, well, when we were first uh, selected for Surrey Smashers, we did have a kind of a, a gathering here where we had a, a day where kids could come down and, you know, we could give a bit of coaching. We had a photo shoot and it was great to all meet each other and so on. And that was a few months ago now. Sharp intake of breath, breath, should I say, from this language there. As Jenny Walworth knocks it just wide. 4-3. Surrey lead in the third. It's those sorts of areas you mentioned before about how how Jenny would cope with the speed of the play and I think you know maybe a couple of years ago that would have been straight up the floor but those are the chances that uh, she's just missing just a little bit off the pace now. So left for there. Ellis did really well and dominated that rally, didn't he? Well, again, we said at the start that we'll see some high paced stuff from, from Marcus. He hit the smash in the back of the court and he was in so quickly to get the kill there. Really, really quickly. Time long from Ellis, so it's a two-point gap now. Surrey leads 6-4 on a level of one set apiece in this best of five mixed doubles event. Mistake on the serve from Matt Nottingham. So 5-6 now. Jenny will work to serve for Lufter. Right 
nicely judged by Nottingham, so 7-5. Power play called by Surrey, smashes, so this serve worth two for Surrey, just one should Loughborough win the point. So this is essentially set point for Surrey to take a 2-1 lead. And they do it, this time it's Matt Nottingham who gets the rub of the green from the net cord, so 9-5. Surrey take the third to have a 2-1 lead. Let's talk about the power play if we can, uh, please, Chris. During the first uh, game for, for Surrey Smashers, how did you all approach the power play? Was it a sort of unknown entity, or did you did you have a plan based around it? Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I think it was more see what happens, and if we think it's a good time to use it, use it. I've got to say to the guys there, perfect time to use it. Because it, well, it worked out amazingly, but also a great time. I don't know if it's a call from the coaches, you can't quite see from back here off the players, but whoever decided to make that call is a great choice. Now, I think if Surrey can start this set well, I think it's going to be really hard for Loughborough to come back because the pressure's going to be on them massively. Certainly interesting, Neil. We spoke about it briefly earlier. The difference in quality between the power play shuttles in match night two and match night one was huge. Yeah, in match night one, the serving was a little bit off and... You know, so it was literally just serves in the net or serves out. It was a nice tight serve from Emily there, and, and you can just see that Matt was taking the shot really, keeping it flat because he didn't want to lift it. Because as Chris said, the shot was flying a little bit faster, so it becomes harder to defend. Matt Nottingham levels it up at one all with a big smash from mid court. Can't give him opportunities like that. And he'll serve one all. <laughs> Nicely done from Walwick. She finds the gap. Much to the displeasure of Chris, Chris Langridge alongside me. <laughs> I think now it feels like a little bit we're hitting to Marcus's racket. Marcus, is, he's stepped up there, and Matt's still continuing to put pace on it, but when Marcus is stepping in, which is it's kind of putting us under pressure. There we go, it's a nice return from Matt there. That's good there from Matt, though. Great change of where he's placing the shuttle. The rally before, trying to go with power at Marcus. Marcus has got quick reactions, and Matt ended up losing the rally there. He's waited, he's gone over, he's gone in front, he's turned, he's twisted, and that is that is the important thing in mix. You want to get your players out of position before you fully attack. This time the tables are turned though, and Jenny Woolwork taking full advantage there. And a loose serve from Emily Westwood. I say, not the best serve from Emily there, so he got the treatment that he deserved. It's actually interesting, we mentioned earlier about the, yeah, the tactic to try and get the ladies to the rear of the court, but if you can actually analyse the game, the number of smashes that we've been. The, the rallies that have been won by the, the lady smashes today has been quite high. As was that serve from Matt Nottingham quite high. That sharp intake of breath you could hear was Chris Langridge sat to my right hand side. That's two really loose serves from the Surrey pair. In this fourth set, and as you've said, they've got the treatment they deserve. And at this stage of the match, you can't afford to give away any free points. It's the right idea there from Emily. It's just a little bit short. And as soon as you hit a clear that's a bit too flat or a bit too short, it just it puts you under so much pressure. For me, it just feels like Emily's sort of dropping off the net a little bit and is almost becoming a bit of a, a bit more of an easy target for, for anything that goes overhead, which is forcing Emily to the back. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, 
it's hard. We've had we've had two poor points on on the serve. Where Emily's was just a little bit flat and Max was a bit high, and instantly from two poor serves, you know, you're two points down, which is put it just puts that little bit extra pressure on you. So I think it's Emily has edged back a little bit because she's you know maybe feeling like she needs to cover a bit more or something. It it is very important for the girl to get forward, but maybe she's feeling Max quite, can't quite cover as much. It, you know, it's hard to say when you're when you're not actually playing because the game is so different when you're on court and off court. Off court, it's so easy to analyse it. When you're on court, it, it's so hard to see even the basics that are going on that you can't quite analyse. That's why quite often it's great for the coaches to step in. If you're joining us for the first time watching this NBL match night through, we had a timeout called there. That's the first time it's been introduced in this new format, or for this new format, should I say. Each team has one 45-second timeout that they can call, which is the only time that the coaches are officially allowed to intervene. And the first point following the timeout goes to Luffer, which is exactly what Surrey didn't want. They now have a healthy 7-3 lead. Once again, it's short, and Marcus Ellis pounces at the net. 8-3 to level things up. It's the net from Ellis, and Surrey can breathe again. What I was going to talk to you about, Chris, uh, with the with the timeout, how different is it from a player's perspective? But uh, you have to do a lot more sort of thinking for yourselves during the matches when you can't always communicate with the coaches, don't you? Yeah, I mean that is quite different because nowadays, in the tournaments, more and more the coach will be shouting on, and you know that's it's fine to do that. Um, so now it's it's very hard to hear the coach because it's so noisy, and to have a timeout is quite strange because during the set. You know, they can call it. I mean, sorry to be fair, called the timeout a good time because we're we're struggling a bit with most of the game. You know, Lupa took a great, quite a big lead. It's just unfortunate the way that kind of went away. I mean, you could say it's from those two service mistakes or poor serves, the game did start to then slip away. It's now it's obviously a, a you know a crunch set of five points. We have to have a good start. Really have to. Certainly is. It is two all. 9-8-4-9-9-5-4-9 and now it is Wild West shootout time. The first to five points will take this opening opening event, the mixed doubles or the team that leads by three. So if you lead 3-0 or 4-1, you will win. And this is high pressure every point, guys. Lovebro gone straight for the power play to, to kick the uh, final set off. So if they win this rally, they can get a two-point lead straight away. Well left there from Pat Nottingham. A big gamble from that far up the court, but that is huge. As he hits that pink-tipped power play shuttle into the crowd, that is a big moment for Surrey Smashers. It is, because both the sets that, that Loughborough have won, they, as Chris said, they've steamrolled the Surrey pair, but uh, it's really important in this short and final game that they stay in touch. Ellis again at the net. Too hot for Matt Nottingham. Levels it up at one all. So it was a nice idea from Emily, but Marcus is so fast onto the net and he's, he's, you know, he's lo really looking for it. So it's always going to be dangerous. That round of applause you can hear is for a court mopper. What a lovely welcome for him. So fantastic start to Surrey Smashers versus Loughborough Sport. We have gone to the fifth set of the mixed doubles. Good idea from Matt Nottingham, just a bit wide. Marcus Ellis leaves it and it goes out to his left. So 2-1 Loughborough win. Uh, sorry, Loughborough lead, should I say.
So match point now. It's first to five, but if you take a three-point lead in the breaker, then you win the match. Loughborough leading 3-1. This time, Ellis can only find the net. So Surrey Smash is still in this now. Two, three. We are going the distance. Chris Langridge alongside myself and Neil Cottrell here, absolutely living and breathing every point. Nottingham to serve. Mistake from Matt Nottingham, which brings us once again to match point for Loughborough, 4-2. Huge point there for Surrey. Actually, I feel as though Emily Westwood's done fantastically well there because she's at the back court and you can see how desperate she was to get to the front of the court. Very nicely done from the Surrey pair. Yeah, it's great defence. Really good angle that she found, hit it into the space, which created the lift for Matt and he put it away. Still match point to Loughborough. They lead 4-3. Service into the net from Emily Westwood and Loughborough take the opening fixture of the evening. They beat Surrey Smashers 8 9, 9 4, 5 9, 9 4, 5 3. Chris Langridge, not the ideal start for your team. He doesn't look too happy, but I'm going to have to ask him about it. But a great start for the event. The crowd seems to be having a good time, but it's important that you bounce back straight away. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this was always a 50-50 game. It could have gone either way. I mean, it's frustrating to have lost the match, but you've got to say to our guy, you know, our guys played, they played well, just their opponents played a little bit better. We just got to hope we can maybe pull something out of the bag in one of the singles now, which could be a, a game we maybe didn't on paper expect to win. Fingers crossed the ladies doubles. We can play well, and it should be our game. We'll have to wait and see. Well, we'll leave you get ready for your match, but before you go, what can we expect from the final event of the evening, the men's doubles? Well, being slightly biased, I'm going to say Surrey Smashers, but it's a fairly even game. I mean, Dean was a great player maybe four years ago. He, you know, he hasn't played a competitive tournament since then. Um, yeah, our opponents are good players as well. I mean, Harley just won the, the Welsh Open, so he's obviously playing well. So we'll have to see what happens, you know, when we get on court, but I hope. Sorry, can win that one. Chris Langridge, thanks for joining us. Good luck in your match later. We look forward to seeing you on court. Neil Cottrell, what a fantastic start. Five setter, just what the crowd wanted, although probably not the result that the home crowd wanted. Now, as Chris said, it was a 50 50 game. You know, the, the experience of Warwick and Ellis just told her that the crucial last few points, uh, in, you know, in that deciding shootout, and that's the difference between a win and a loss in this event. It was interesting, when it was tight and, and the sets that were 50-50, the Smashers were able to hold on, but what Loughborough did really well was, was build momentum and make that count. Yeah, again, as Chris said, there was a couple of key points at the start of each of the sets that Loughborough, Loughborough won, and that really built the momentum, and they, they were able to, to keep that level of momentum and that intensity and the pace for, for the whole of the set, and the, both those sets were quite comfortable for Loughborough. Obviously, the final set was a little bit tighter, but it was always going to with, that, with the, the race to five. So, Loughborough have just won the mixed doubles. Marcus Ellis and Jenny Walworth defeated Matt Nottingham and Emily Westwood. 8 9, 9 4, 5 9, 9 4, and 5 3 to claim the opening event of the evening. Next up, we have women's doubles. Surrey Smashers, Gabby Adcock and Ifa Muskins taking on Loughborough's Lauren Smith versus Chloe Birch. As Chris said, important that uh, Surrey Smashers try and bounce straight back, but this one is tough to call.
It is going to be tough to call. It's, it's interesting that, um, that Gabby Adcock is playing against a former ladies' doubles partner, so you know both players will know quite a lot about each other's games. The, the, the Dutch girl, Ava, is uh, you know, a real sort of high-quality European player that we're really looking to have within the NBL in, in this first season, and, and Chloe's a young player, so again, it's always going to be difficult to see how yeah, how she's going to handle the pressure. Uh, obviously, playing with a very experienced partner in Lauren Smith, and that should help her through. And, and uh, so, so they should be a, a really competitive match. But if the first match is anything to go by, then it certainly will be Gabby Adcock and Ava Muskins taking on Lauren Smith and Chloe Birch in the second event of the evening, the women's doubles as the Surrey pair are welcomed onto court to a rapturous applause. As I said before, it really does sound and feel special inside the Surrey Sports Park this evening. Over a thousand tickets sold out two weeks in advance. I'm sure this is exactly what the organizers had in mind when they thought of and executed the NBL. Absolutely, you can see just by I mean, Chris next to us then, that he was playing every point from up in the commentary box here, and he's absolutely gutted that his team have got off to a losing start. So you can see what it means to the players, and they're, they're really investing in this in this uh, concept of the National League. Absolutely. Chris Language, of course, is the captain of Surrey Smashers, and as Neil just said, he was sat alongside us, and he, he was he was tensing up after every point when the shuttle was live. He just didn't he didn't know where to look. And of course, playing the game at the level that he does, he almost knew what was going to happen before it happened. And there were a few sharp intakes of breath when it was a loose shot from the Surrey pier because he knew that the Loughborough pier were going to absolutely punish them. And they did. Marcus Ellis and Jenny Wall were claiming the first point of the evening for the Loughborough team. We've traveled a couple of hours down the M1 to play in this absolute cauldron that the home support are providing here inside the Surrey Sports Park. The women's doubles, Gabby Adcock and Afa Muskins taking on Lauren Smith and Chloe Birch. Gabby Adcock, of course, a fantastic Commonwealth Games, taking a gold medal, has also been ranked in the top five in the world. Her partner is a European bronze medalist, and has herself been ranked 15 in the world, so a really, really strong pairing are the Surrey Smashers women's doubles. By contrast, Loughborough, Lauren Smith and Chloe Birch. Lauren, of course, a double Glasgow 2014 medalist herself. And Chloe Birch, a real light for the future, Neil. 11 national junior titles playing in an environment like this in, against quality players in front of a big crowd this will do a player like Chloe Birch the world of good yeah it will it's great experience you know she's played a lot of high pressure junior tournaments but the, the step up to the senior badminton is, is quite substantial um, so, so this sort of environment is, is, is a really good breeding ground for the top international players of the future if you have just joined us Loughborough are in the purple uniforms, Surrey Smashers in the black. And left for strike first, a lot of dynamic to that rally, Neil. Yeah, the ladies' doubles is is evolving all the time. I think um, in the, over the last sort of five or six years, the valleys have been quite long because the ladies haven't been able to produce as much power that uh, that they that can overcome the defences of the opposition. Whereas now, as the as the players are getting better and, and more tactically aware as well, then you, you see far much far more smashing and attacking play. Bit of confusion there from the Surrey pair. No one knew whose shuffle it was. So Loughborough took a 2-0 lead, but Smith hits it wide to the Surrey right there, and they get their first point of the match. So Loughborough 2, Surrey 1. Chloe Birch quickly onto the serve there to open up a two-point lead. She will now serve 3-1.
It's good patient play from Muskins there. So had a, a couple of attacking opportunities the back of court. Chose to take some of the pace off it. Wait for a shorter lift and then he's made Smash much more effective. Adcock getting away with a loose serve there. He's smashed back by Smith. But eventually the return from Loughborough goes long and it's three all now, early in the first. <laughs> Muskins gets the benefit of the take there. But again, a couple of soft attacking shots from Muskins to, to set up the smashing opportunity. So it seems, it seems to be a tactic that she's trying to employ during the, the first part of this set. And she seems to be disguising them well too. So the left repair, not really sure what to commit to. Smash is leading 4-3 and Cox serves. wide from Smith a couple of times already in this first set. Neil, we've seen Gabby Adcock not scared to serve quite high to Lauren Smith, as if she's almost saying, look, I'm, I'm not scared of your, your smash, we can defend that. Yeah, it's interesting because Lauren's a very powerful player, especially from the back of the court, but, you know, Gabby's been playing mixed um, at world level, you know, in the top five in the world in mixed, so he's used to the top male player smashing at her, so he's obviously really confident in her defence and what it does do, it moves Lauren away from the net, which opens up the rest of the court so she can build a rally. Muskins finding space there and running Birch to the back right corner of the left of court. She can't wrap it up, rack it around it. And the smashers lead 6-4. Groans from the crowd there, and a bit of laughter as the left repair find each other with the shuttle. And I'm not sure if you can hear it at home, but a, a rather unceremonious sound effect played at the same time. 7 4 Surrey lead. Wide again from Smith and really strong defence from Gabby Adcock there, Neil. Yeah, so in her defensive skills, she's so confident and she can, you know, she's stepping in on the smash rather than backing off and waiting for that, that smash to come. 8-4, game point. Into the net from Smith, so Surrey smashes get the start that they'd have wanted. They lead, no, sorry, they win the first set 9 4 to take a 1 0 lead. And Neil, they seem to be executing their game plan really well. Yeah, for me, Surrey look really confident in everything they're doing. They almost feel, look like they feel that the Luffler player can't hurt them no matter what they do, you know, whether it's defense or, or through their attack. And, uh, you know, I think providing they can keep that level of, of intensity and momentum and uh, they keep Lauren Smith out of the game, then it, it could well be a short game, this one. It's interesting, the way that uh, you said Gabby Adcock almost stepping into the smash, that must be really disheartening for the person who's given it everything and hitting it at them, almost like a boxer who's just walking on to punches. You think, well, what can I do? to get through this. Well, absolutely, and the usual thing is just to try and smash it even harder, and, and that's when the errors start to come in.
great rally there and an uncharacteristic mistake from Muskins with the smashers on the front foot in that rally really that was a big chance absolutely again great defense from, from Surrey and, and uh, to create that attacking opportunity and it was almost too easy in the end and this with this match going in the net for Muskins I think that's the only the, the way that Loughborough can get back into this is if so we lose their concentration, their focus a little bit, and, and say Lauren can get a little bit more into the game and, and start to dominate the rallies. Well, just as you say that, that's another mistake from Muskins as the shuttle goes long, 2-0 to Loughborough early in the second. But well left from Gabby Adcock. And Surrey smashes off the mark, 1-2. Frustrated body language from Adcock. She gives away the point from the long serve. But they exchange service mistakes, so 2 3. Again, that unceremonious sound effect is played. Well, Chloe was really early on to that, that sort of mid court push then. And, and really gave it some power into uh, Muskin's body which she couldn't return <laughs> right there from left first of the gap now just one point Three, four. That was interesting then because it almost looked like Gabby Adcock knew what Lauren was going to do then to play that drop shot because she was already almost standing right at the net when she played it. The fact that they played so much badminton together, do you think they actively know what their, well, their former partner or their partner is going to do? Or do you think it almost becomes a subconscious reactionary thing? Yeah, I think it's more subconscious. Uh, I think in certain situ situations, players generally play certain types of shots. So, you, you know, that, there might have been a trigger there that where uh, as soon as the shot starts to drop a little bit in the rear of the court, then it realistically it's going to be a soft onto the net. Smith there trying to get onto that service early, finds the net. So Surrey have turned things around and Gabby Adcock serves with 5-4 for scoring the second. Another long, dynamic rally finished by Gabby Adcock. She looks to G up the crowd in a pump of the fist there as well. They enjoyed that one, Neil. Yeah, it was like Surrey smashes were a brick wall and the they sort of just kept coming back no matter how hard Loughborough was smashing, then the lists were just coming back. Loughborough call the timeout. This is quite evenly poised at 6-4 and you can't help but think this timeout was called because Loughborough see this as a must-win set and it's important that they stem this Surrey momentum. Yeah, the problem for Loughborough is that the, the major weapon that they have is their power, but at the moment, that power is just coming straight back from the defence of Surrey and just looking at Hayley Connor there, speaking to the Surrey pair, and she was, she was um, with her hand, was, was imitating the, the lift, so almost like to say, just keep defending, keep defending, and then when the attacking opportunity comes, then he can put the shuttle away because at the moment then it doesn't look like Surrey can get through providing the defence is deep enough. Yes indeed, very clinical from Lefra so far. They took the first event of the evening, the mixed doubles 3-2. And they lead, sorry, left a trail here. 6-4 and 1-0. But another service mistake. 
which makes it 5 6. Lovely drop shot there, though, from Muskins to make it 7 5. I always feel, Neil, no matter what the sport, the first point after the timeout is really important because if you win it, then all of a sudden you feel great about what's been said. But if you lose it, then it's almost like you're back to square one and it really knocks the stuffing out of you. Yeah, especially when you're only playing to nine in badminton, it's, uh, it's a really big advantage if you can start that momentum early. Speaking of momentum, that is a huge finish from Gabby Adcock. It was too high, too short, and too easy. And that is set point now for the Surrey Smashers. 8-5 to make it 2-0. Still got to stay positive here. It was a, a good return from Lauren Smith there. She really sort of went for it, even though it was match point down. Game point down. Well left by Adcock and Surrey Smashers lead 2-0. They took the first 9-4. They took the second 9-6. More positive signs from Loughborough that time, Neil, but not quite enough against a very organised Smashers defence. Well, uh, Muskins and Adcock are a, are a class a pair of doubles players. Admittedly, they don't play together you know, on a normal basis, um, but you can you can see some of that in some of the hesitancy about who should cover which particular shots. But essentially, when they're in the rallies, it's so hard to get the shuttle through them. And then when they get the attacking opportunities, they're putting the shuttle away as well. So I find it really difficult to see how, how Loughborough can get back into this match. It's almost as though they need to invent new ways to get around the defence because they certainly can't get through it at the moment. They trail 2-0 to the left of there. Sammy smashes to serve first in the third. That's a really confident start from the home pair in this third set. A long rally, but Surrey seems in control pretty much every shot. Yeah, again, yeah. the thing that Loughborough have got to do is obviously get the shuttle on the floor. So just by hitting the shuttle harder at the moment, because the defences are so good, it's just coming back. So a little bit more variety of pace and angle is required here, and uh, that's what Surrey are doing to Loughborough. And lucky there from Lauren Smith. Great change of angle, exactly what you talked about, Neil. But just an inch wide of the tape. <laughs> Beautifully done from Muskins. Well disguised drop shot. He was hitting that straight towards us, Neil, and even I thought it was a smash. Absolutely, it's that strong defence and that variety in attack, which has really been the difference between the two pairs. Left for off the mark, this time Adcock into the net, 1-3. to this stage of the, the match and Loughborough have thrown everything and just had such little joy against Surrey at 4-1 in the third and you know it's such a long way back do you think motivation stays stays the same or do you think it becomes more difficult I think it's a little bit more difficult the, you see these guys are training with each other certainly Gabby and, and Lauren uh, are training with each other on a daily basis they won't want to lose to each other um, but again 
Yeah, just like in anything, psychologically, once you, you're down and there's not much margin now to the end of the game, it's going to be very difficult for Loughborough to stay motivated. Well, here comes the power play. Gabby Adcock looking to put the hammer down. Oh, that was all a bit of a damp squib in the end. It's always going to be a dangerous tactic, even though the defences are so good. As we mentioned with Chris earlier, the, the power play shuttle does fly slightly differently because of the, the pink tip to it. So it was, uh, it was always going to be dangerous to offer the smash to Loughborough. Well, there was a bit of change of tactic with the serve as well. Adcock going deeper that time, but eventually they left the shuttle far too short and it was finished with a plomb. So 2-5. That was beautifully finished by Adcock, but what about that defence from Baskins? Yeah, amazing reactions there, and, and then with the vision from Adcock to finish the point as well. Great rally for, for Surrey Smashers then. Down the line from Adcock, 7-2. Just two points required for a very, very comprehensive win in this women's doubles. Well, just wide. I couldn't quite see from our angle, looked like a lovely shot from Smith, but match point nonetheless. Yeah, it was very tight that one, it looked like it might have grazed the outside of the line, but with no replays and the line judges calls final. Short there from Adcock and Birch finishes, still match point. The third set and the match, a really, really comprehensive performance from the Surrey Smashers women's doubles pair. Gabby Adcock and Afi Muskins defeat Lauren Smith and Chloe Birch 9-4, 9-6, 9-3 to level the fixture at one game apiece. And that is about the most comprehensive defensive display, display should I say, that I have seen in the NBL so far, Neil. Uh, a, a very, very commanding display from Surrey Smashers there. Complete control over the, all areas of the court, the service, the defence, the attacking play. Perfect, really, for a pair who don't normally play together. So, you know, it's going to be an exceptional pair of uh, ladies' doubles players that can beat Muskins and Adcock during the rest of this NBL season. You say that they don't play together regularly, but the fact that they're both so strong defensively just, just bodes, bodes so well for them both, because even though that communication isn't there, their individual skill level just takes them up a notch. Yeah, there are some fundamental areas where yeah, it, it, some that apply to all doubles play, so you know, these top-level players know exactly where other people, are, their partner is going to go when the shot's lifted or when they're defending and that sort of thing, so that forms the, the foundation. With having the really strong defence, then they can build a rally from that, so it doesn't really matter if they get out of position because they... You know, as they showed during the game, they can always pull a shot out, turn an angle, and then get an attacking position. And then with the level of... Um, they're not the most powerful players from the back of the court, but they have a degree of variety and deception, which they use really well there to open position.
So we're two matches in to this NBL match night three event. Surrey Smashers and Love for Sport are locked at one apiece following the mixed doubles and the women's doubles. The first event of the evening was the mixed doubles and Matt Nottingham and Emily Westwood of Surrey Smashers were defeated by Marcus Ellis and Jenny Walwork of Loughborough. 8-9, 9-4, then 5-3 in the break. It was an incredible way to get the evening underway. We've just had the women's doubles where Gabby Adcock and Afa Muskins of Surrey Smashers put on a comprehensive display against Lauren Smith and Chloe Birch. They won in straight sets, 9-4, 9-6, 9-3. Next up, it's the third event of the evening. The men's singles, Surrey Smashers, Carl Baxter takes on Loughborough Sports, Henry Herskinen. What can we expect here, Neil? Again, on paper, Henry is the quality player. He's a former European silver medalist. He's taken some big scalps in his career so far. He is, has been playing a number of events over the last few weeks and, uh, and months. Uh, so it's going to be one of two things. It could be a little bit fatigued or it could be right in the groove and ready to, to take on Carl today. Huge welcome for Carl Baxter as he makes his way onto the court. A five-time national finalist himself and a former England international so despite the fact that Henry is in great form this season his first NBL match of course he beat England's number one Raj Usef quite comprehensively Carl Baxter could use his experience and of course this fantastic home crowd to spur him on so uh, as we've said before there are matches that on paper look pretty one-sided but we have seen upsets one thing we know from Carl Baxter's style of play is that he'll, he'll keep playing until the last shot was hit. And, you know, he, he covers the court incredibly well. The question will be over his speed and his fitness because he's not training full time anymore, as you know, obviously Henry is, and he's playing on the world circuit. So it just depends. You know, Henry's a very deceptive player, but Carl can get shuttles back, and, and if he can keep enough shuttles in, he's still going to have a fighting chance here. Well, you say about uh, getting shuttles in, we've seen already in the NBL, even in its infancy, that mistake-free badminton is absolutely imperative. Absolutely, you know, playing up to nine is, is unusual for these players because they, they're used to playing to 21. Some events this year, there's been a trial system of playing to 11, but even still, you know, with the power plays and, and the, the lack of coaching during the game, it's, it's a completely different environment for these guys to be playing in. They're just trying to get a Mexican wave going in the crowd. It's it's just about it's just about started to happen. But I'll be completely honest with you. I've seen more efficient ones. Aside from the Mexican wave, the crowd here have been absolutely fantastic. A packed house, as I mentioned before, over a thousand seats sold out two weeks in advance. So far, they've seen some real quality on court. As time is called, and we're about to get underway in this men's singles. Carl Baxter for Surrey Smashers, all in black, faces Sweden's Henry Herskinen for Loughborough in purple with the white chevron, a five-time national finalist taking on a former European silver medalist and Olympian in a best of five, first to nine match to see who will take the lead in the match overall. We're locked at one all after two events. And it is very nearly go time. As the players go through their final preparations, remember, do please tweet us. We'd love to hear from you. At NBL underscore official is where to send your tweets using the hashtag Game Changer and the hashtag NBL Badminton. We're underway here. Well, you said that uh, Herskinen was deceptive. He's really, really disguised that one well to win the first point of the match. Yeah, he pushed Carl around nicely there, got a little bit of a short lift and just cut across the feather at the last moment to send it cross court. And that was very decisive again. A little bit short from Baxter. And a little snap of the wrist to make it 2-0 for the left man. 
the worry here is the way that Huskainen played against Dusif, he just completely steamrolled him from the first point, so it's important that Baxter can stay with him early in the early exchanges here, otherwise again it could be a very difficult night for him. Three nil to Huskainen and three very different points as well, the first a lovely disguised drop shot, the second a very snappy smash and that one showing a bit of finesse at the net. Carl Baxter having to work very hard at the moment to no avail, again too short and Haskainen not even broken a sweat and he's leading 4-0 already. No, he's got great racket skills, a nice really short snappy action and just get the shuttle down so fast it's uh, very difficult if uh, Carl's not going to play a decent length here. A mistake from Herskinen. The close-ups of uh, Carl Baxter. Quite a worried look on his face there already. A few beads of sweat on his brow. Point goes to Baxter. Pushing Heskinen to the back of the court. He thought that one was going to drop long, but it didn't. Fist pump from the Surrey Smasher. 2 4. Yeah. Back to trying to play Heskinen at his own game there, Neil. Trying to move him around a little bit, and now he's on a run himself. 3 yeah. 4. I think the important thing, Baxter needs to make this a bit of a war, so the more he can get the crowd on side by a bit of fist pumping and a bit of shouting, then that will really help him. <laughs> Lovely variety there from Huskainen. Masks a few, but when he unleashes that big left hand, it's very difficult to get back. It is very difficult because all those different shots come from the same preparation. So, you know, Baxter's having to wait to see where the shuttle's coming before he can actually move. And when it's coming that fast, it hasn't got the reaction time. Skyland just seems to make a few tiny little adjustments at the net and they're really difficult to spot and it must be, it's difficult for us to spot from here and we're not out on the court. Carl Baxter must just be so uncertain the whole time at the moment. Yeah, well his, his preparation at the net especially is so early. He's holding his net out, he's waiting to, for Baxter to commit and then just turning in a different direction. There are lots of different kinds of players, and the Skyland seems as though he drive you crazy with his calmness. You're just desperate for him to do something, whether it's pump his fist or celebrate or shout, but he's cool as a cucumber out there at the moment and leads 7-3. Yeah, it's looking ominous for Baxter here, because this is how exactly how we started against Dusa. Wide this time, and the point goes to Baxter, so 4-7 in the first set of this men's singles event. <laughs> Service over, so set point then. Henry Huskainen for Loughborough. Bit of a master class at the moment. And wide on Haskinen's right, so he wins the first 4-9. And you said the word ominous uh, at the, a couple of points ago, Neil. That was fairly comprehensive from the left man. A lot of grunt and industry from Carl Baxter, but he's not really got an answer at the moment. No, he's, you know, Henry's controlling all of the rallies, and he's, he's almost got Carl Baxter on a piece of string, and he's making him run and cover all areas of the court. And then as soon as the shuttle is short, he's putting it away, so... 
you know, Carl's going to do something pretty drastic here. He's, he's going to start to dominate the rallies a little bit more and get, get Huskine to play his game rather than, than the other way around, because otherwise they can't see a way back. Seems to really enjoy this form of the game. As a man who looks suspiciously like Tim Lovejoy was just up on our screens then. If he is, in fact, in the house, I hope he's enjoying the badminton. So we're about to get underway with the second set here. Henry Huskinen took the first 9-4 against Carl Baxter. We've got our second celebrity guest alongside myself and Neil in the commentary position too. Matt Nottingham, first match you played didn't quite go the way you wanted to, but how was it in front of this fantastic crowd? Yeah, it was really good. The crowd got really behind us in the, in the game. Uh, Sorry we couldn't uh, get the result that we, we wanted as well as you. Um, it was a very nervous uh, game from both sides. Um, but yeah, we, we gave it our best shot. Much better from Carl Baxter there. Great defence. But the point still goes to Huskinen. You say nerves there. How does it affect you in the shortened format? Because I suppose you could be nervous for the first few points, but then if you lose those points, you don't have the time to recoup them as the match goes on, do you? Uh, well, yeah, the scoring to nine, it makes it uh, a very quick set. Um, so you don't have much time to get into the game. Um, you do get the, uh, the timeout, which we did have to use in the third set. Um, but yeah, it's a very quick game. If you don't get a momentum, it's very hard to come back within the set. Carl Baxter onto the Huskine and serve quickly there to get himself off the mark. In the second set, with one three. And wide again from the left man. So two three now. What Carl's going to do is going to try and sort of break the game up a little bit and try and get uh, Henry to make a few more errors. Oh. Sort of avoid playing stuff too short because anything that's short, and, uh, Henry's all over it and putting the shot on the floor. and looks like he's in a bit of a rush to get this one over with. He's looking very, very impressive at the moment. And Carl Baxter leaving a lot of shuttle short. But the big left-hander is making light work of. But that one goes long. Another come on and a fist bump from Carl Baxter. How important do you think the crowd can be? And Neil mentioned earlier, Matt, that Carl Baxter will look to try and get them on his side with his, sh with his shouting and his fist bumps. The atmosphere from here sounds and feels great. How does it feel out there in the middle? I mean, it's very loud when you're when you down there. Uh, when the crowd get behind you, it's such a boost. Uh, you, you can feel that they're on your side and it really gives you a push and the momentum through, through the next point. to get a bit of momentum himself here. And the mistake from Herskinen levels it up at 5-all. Carl Baxter controlling things a little bit better here, guys. Yeah, the crowd getting really behind Carl now, making it loud for Henry. It's no thinking involved.
Once again, though, Neil, good use of angles from Henry there for a left breath. It's just those those little adjustments make it very difficult for the home player. Yeah, but it also makes it really easy if the, if the clear that comes before it is that short. It just makes the, the smash you know, much more effective. Have you found playing today, Matt, after obviously you come off the back of the uh, Welsh International last week uh, where you won the men's doors? Yeah, um, me and Harley, who's playing for Loughborough now. Um, me and Harley, who's playing for Loughborough now, uh, we won Wales and obviously confidence is a little bit higher than it usually would. Um, so I felt very confident going into the game. Uh, when, when we did step on court, though, it was a very nervous game. Um, so, yeah, that did play a massive part in in the game. So hopefully Carl can get, get a bit of a momentum here and get this back so we can be 2-1 up. Difficult for him there with another monster smash from Henry Verskynen. Great angle from that big left hand. 7-5 in the second. Make that 8-5. They're impressive looking shots, guys, but Carl is making it a bit easy for him by leaving the shuttle so short. He's under an awful amount of pressure here, and you know we're saying that the clears are short, but you know he's having to chase the shuttle all over the court, so it, it makes you know Carl's clears much more difficult as well. The spring's gone here for Carl, so he'll do well to get out of this rally. Oh. Oh. So, strings gone there for Carl Baxter, along with the second set. Henry Haskinen leads the Surrey Smashers man 2-0, 9-4, 9-5. He's two sets down and a racket down, and he's really, really up against it here. Yeah, there's a bit of a rally in that second set, but again, Henry just completely controlled what, uh, you know, most of the rallies that were happening. You know, Baxter's only real, real sort of opportunity here is to force Henry into a few more hours, but you know, providing Henry can keep his concentration, uh, it's going to be very difficult. But as we've seen all the way along in this NBL format so far, you, you know, there's no absolute certainty. Well, Henry is looking for his second out of two victories in the NBL, but uh, as you mentioned earlier, Neil, he's not necessarily had his best form in other tournaments this calendar. No, he's clearly saving it for the NBL. Carl Baxter there showing a bit of power of his own. Takes the first point off the third set. Make that 2 0. Shuttle goes wide. From Herskinen. How was Carl feeling about this game today? Was he, was he confident or has he played Henry before? Um, I'm not sure if he's played Henry before. He knows, obviously, he's a very good player. Um, but been to Olympics, um, multiple winner of Challenge Series around the uh, world. Um, but he, he goes on playing his right game, knowing that he, if he can get in Henry's head and he plays the right style, that he's got a really good chance of winning this game. Bit of luck off the net from the sky and a, a groan of frustration from Matt Nottingham alongside us, who's joined us, myself and Neil Cottrell in the commentary position following his mixed doubles match first up on NBL match night three. Once again, short and finished. Carl Baxter's 3-0 early lead has now been pegged back to one point in the third. Great move here from Carl Baxter. Probably the most comfortable he's looked in a rally throughout the match. Lovely touch at the net and a great smash to finish. Yeah, very well worked rally. Uh, very good composure around the net to set up for his big smash winner. Oh. Yes. A 
again just wide from the left from Manning. Carl Baxter it looks like a different player in this third set. He leads 5-2. As Matt said, if he can get into his head, and it looks like he is at the moment, with Henry cooking up a few mistakes. This time it's just wise from Baxter. The thing with Henry as well, what, what we spoke about is, is his mood or his movements or his body language doesn't really seem to change if he's done something really well or really badly. So it must be so difficult for his opponents to read him. But this time he leaves it short and Carl Baxter smashes down the middle of the court, 6-3. As we said at the start, one thing we do know from Carl is that he'll keep going right to the very end. So he, he sniffs a bit of a chance in this set. So it'll be, it'll be interesting if he see if he can keep that momentum and take it. Skynan reacts quickest at the net there. Straight at the body of Carl Baxter. No return in those. So 4-6. The left the man trails, but he leads two sets to nil. Carl just trying to, needs to try and build the rallies a little bit more, He's going for the shots a little bit too early in this in this uh, end of the second, uh, third set, sorry. Needs to keep building the rallies like he was doing towards the start of the set. Interesting, Carl Baxter, every time he's won his last few points, whether it's been a winner for himself or a mistake, from Henry, his fist pump in his shout, he is looking to make eye contact with his opponent. He's looking to build that momentum and get inside his head and really exert himself on this set. He's 7-5 up. And then makes a mistake like that, a really, really big mistake. Far more animated than his opponent. 6-7. I get the feeling that this next point is going to be really, really huge in the momentum of the set. And you may have heard a partisan Matt Nottingham say, come on, come on, come on there, he knew what was going to happen. And it did, Carl Baxter wins the point and has set points to close the gap to one set, make it 2-1. Great opportunity here for the Surrey Smasher. Yeah. Into the net from Henry Herskinen. And Carl Baxter has taken the third set, 9-6. Much, much better from the home player, gentlemen. Yeah, Carl feeding from the crowd then, getting the support that he needs to get through that third set. It was interesting as well, looking at looking back at the last few rallies, is that a lot of the shots that Carl played to the net were more towards the centre of the court, which actually made Henry to try and create an angle out wide, which actually led to a few errors. So I think that was the difference towards the end of that second set, third set. Really important here, Matt, that Carl maintains this uh, maintains this composure maintains this momentum into the fourth yeah he needs to keep building the rallies as he was doing towards the start of that last set he needs to come out firing in this uh, third set and get a good lead but a lovely change of direction from the left from there wrong foots his opponent and takes the first point of the fourth. So if Carl does take this set, Matt, it goes into the, the five-point breaker, and that must just be such a, a crazy thing to be involved with, because you just, how, do you, how did you approach that? Well, in our game, we knew that they were gonna take the power play that they still had. Uh, early on, um, which ev eventually we won 
their power play, so it didn't affect the game too much. Um, but the nerves when you go into that final set just double because it's only five points, so it goes just goes so fast. Yeah, first to five, quite literally anything can happen, especially because you've only really got a two-point buffer as well. Because as soon as you're two behind, it's match point. Just another of those fantastic rule changes, the game changes that the NBL have introduced. An exchange at the net there that Herskinen wins. So 3-1 early in the fourth. A must win for Carl Baxter if he's to stay in the match. The left man takes it, and he takes the match, and Loughborough take the lead overall. This time short from Herskinen, and Baxter pounces at the net, 2-3. Yeah, you can see what Henry was trying to do there, trying to play with a little bit of height on his side of the net to bring it really close on Carl's side, but it was just a little bit too loose. And Carl was ready for it and put it away well. gets the better of the net exchange as Haskinen can only find the tape and it's 3-all. In this fourth set, Carl starting to play a little bit flatter, um, being, uh, meaning that Henry can't use his slices, which is one of his best shots. Uh, I think it's a very good tactic um, and it seems to be working so far. Carl Baxter really catching out the variety. He's gone for the power play. Both players still have their power play. Both players did have their power plays. Now Baxter's used his, guess the two points. And that does show how it can change the momentum. Haskinen led 3-1. Carl Baxter now on a four-point run. Following the successful power play, Loughborough have called for the timeout. And all of a sudden, from what looked like a walkover, this match is really evenly poised. Yeah, it's Carl's never say die attitude. Good time to play it though. Hopefully that will give him a little bit of momentum and a bit more belief that he can actually still take the set. You know, from 1-3 down to 5-4, five, 5-3 four, five, up is a, is a great swing and he just needs to, just, just to make sure that, that this timeout doesn't break that momentum and he can keep, you know, he can start the next phase of the game from here. Well, momentum is a word we say time and time again. And in this shortened format, then momentum is absolutely everything. Carl Baxter, five. Henry Huskinen, three. Huskinen leads 2-1 in sets. Baxter to serve following his successful power play. Good defense from Baxter, but couldn't quite get the right touch on it. You could see what he was trying to do there. He moved for Skyland around the court very well, front to back, but just the mistake into the net closes the gap now to just 1.45 for Skyland to serve. Beautifully done there from Herskinen. Hits the deck, gets back up, takes control of the rally. And wins the point to level it up at five ball. It just shows the athleticism of it. You know, he's a big guy, Henry, full length dive, and he was straight back up again to, to, to keep himself in the point. Carl will feel like a bit of a missed opportunity there, though, because he, he was well in control of that rally. Well, every point counts. Now, remember, it's first to nine. You don't have to win by two clear points. 
So one of these players is four points away from a victory. The other is four points away from forcing the fifth set race to five. As we will rock you, busts out inside the stadium. The crowd getting involved. Great atmosphere here inside Surrey Sports Park. Henry has come in to serve. Down the line, giving Carl Baxter no time to react there, and he's now snuck into the lead. It's been really to and fro here, but Herskinen on a three-point run. Carl Baxter really needs to plug this momentum now. Yeah, that was a poor rally from Carl there. He's got himself back in the game, and that was a pretty much of a three-point for Henry. Yeah. That's a mistake there from Carl Baxter. It was a lovely round the back return to keep himself in the rally from Haskinen. The crowd showed their appreciation, but that's a big mistake from Carl. It was another missed opportunity there and nearly ended up with Matt Nottingham falling off the stage. That was a commentary box. Yeah, Carl having to work very hard for his points now. He needs to start working Henry a little bit as well around the court more. He's just smashing everything at the moment. Well, he could be running out of time. Unbelievable, Carl Baxter, that's three points in a row. But he had the whole court begging. Yellow card shown there. I didn't hear or see anything there, gents, did you? I'm not sure what that was for, whether he's, he threw his racket on the floor or... Perhaps he uh, uttered something that the umpire overheard. Well, you can certainly understand the frustration because he has gifted the last three points to his opponents. And from five all, it's now match point to Loughborough's Henry Herskinen. And the last two in particular, they're really, really unforgivable errors at this level, aren't they? Yeah, they are points that Carl should be winning. That worked the wallet, rallied well. And just the last last shot just wasn't as good quality as the rest of the while. So match point eight five for Skyn and Leeds. And finally we see a show of emotion from the red-headed left from man Henry Herskine and defeats Seri Smashers Carl Baxter in the men's singles. 9-4, 9-5, 6-9. 9-5, it was a spirited effort from Carl Baxter, guys, but ultimately, Henry Haskinen looked more comfortable throughout the match. Yeah, all credit to Carl there. I mean, Henry was then there as the, the favourite for, to win that, that event, and, you know, really, the first two sets, it looked like it was going to be quite a straightforward evening for Henry, but Carl really dug in, and as we said right at the start of the, uh, of the event, that he was always going to be working hard and keep fighting to the last point, but he just didn't quite have enough to take, take Henry tonight. And it was no more than 15 minutes ago that we were talking about the importance in the NBL of mistake-free badminton. And right at the end there, where it looked like Carl was really in contention, there were a few of those shuttles that went into the net when really they should have been easy finishes. Yeah, like you say, with the scoring, the mistakes just can't come into it. Uh, you have to take your chances, which what Carl didn't do in that last in that last set. Um, I feel like if he'd taken them chances, it would have been a completely different game. So we are three events into NBL match night three here at the Surrey Sports Park. Surrey Smashers against Loughborough Sports. Matt Nottingham is alongside myself and Neil Cottrell. He took part in the first event of the evening, the mixed doubles, where himself and Emily Westwood lost in five fantastic sets to Marcus Ellis and Jenny Woolworth. That was followed by the women's doubles, where Surrey leveled things up as Gabby Adcock and Afa Muskins defeated Lauren Smith and Chloe Birch, 9-4, 9-6, 9-3. We've just had the men's singles, Carl Baxter, was defeated by Henry Huskine at 9-4, 9-5, 6-9, 9-5. Next up, it's the women's singles with Soraya Devish-Eichbergen 
of Surrey Smashers will take on Linda Zichiri of Loughborough. Next up is game four, the women's Soraya, a former Dutch junior four. champion Good against control. Linda Zichiri, the Bulgarian number one. How do we feel this one's going to go, gents? I think this could be quite a tight one. I think both of these, uh, these two European players are good quality singles players. Um, you know, Zachiri is probably slightly more experienced, you know, on, on, a, on the sort of world scene. But, you know, Soraya had a really good performance in her first NBL match and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of fancy a chance in this game. crowd on their feet for this one of course the women's singles after this we've just got one event remaining that'll be the men's doubles myself Dave Rogers and Neil Cottrell once again in the commentary box alongside us Matt Nottingham Matt You've been with us for the men's singles. You've now sat in the commentary box. You've experienced the crowd. You've been on court. We've had Neil's prediction for this match. How do you see it going? Uh, well, like you said, Linda is the, the stronger uh, on paper. She's the highest ranked of uh, 41 compared to Soraya's 80. Um, but hopefully with this new scoring, uh, Soraya can get at her. Um, I know she dips in and out of confidence a lot, uh, Linda, so let's hope that Soraya can get on top of it, use the crowd to her advantage and uh, level things up at 2-all. Interesting, I've just seen the, the back of your shirt there and it was something I noticed earlier. You've all got your Twitter handles on the back of the shirt. How's the reception been on social media? Um, well, Surrey have had the best uh, social media through from what I can see for any any of the teams. Um, they've really plugged it well with uh, Twitter, Facebook, and we've even got our own website. Um, so yeah, everything's been done very well and that's why it's a sellout here. They have done a fantastic job in marketing it. And if you are on Twitter, you can tweet Matt at, at Matt Knotts, that's M-A-T-T-N-O-T-T-S 92. If you'd like to tweet us, you can tweet us at NBL underscore official. We'd like you to use the hashtag GameChanger or the hashtag NBL Badminton. Let us know 